Just outside of Death Valley National Park is a place called Devil's Hole. Devil's Hole is a deep geothermal pool that's home to a very unique species that also happens to be endangered. Devil's Hole became part of the park system in 1952 by proclamation by President Harry Truman. Um, and it was due to both the ecosystem and also because of a peculiar race of fish. And that's our Devil's Hole pupfish. Devil's Hole pupfish are one of several species of pupfish. When water levels dropped during the last ice age, these pupfish were separated from the rest, morphing into an entirely new species, making Devil's Hole the only place they exist in nature. The Devil's Hole pupfish is unique because it lives in pretty much the worst environment that you can think of to be a fish. The like water is a constant 93 degrees Fahrenheit, dissolved oxygen is at lethally low levels. Despite the difficult environment, many scientists believe Devil's Hole pupfish have been around for at least 10,000 years. In the mid to late 1960s, there was development here in Ash Meadows, and there was a local landowner um, that had land right against the 40 acres of Devil's Hole. So this landowner um, put a well right adjacent to the monument boundary. And when he turned on the well, the water level in Devil's Hole declined. With that, with this groundwater pumping, the population declining with the water level going down, uh, the Devil's Hole pupfish was listed as an endangered species under the Endangered Species Preservation Act. That's why the National Park Service, along with the Fish and Wildlife Service and the Nevada Department of Wildlife, are working together to monitor and try to save the Devil's Hole pupfish. A lot of their efforts rely heavily on technology. So it's managed by continuously monitoring the water level. So we have two transducers, so a redundant system. We have it set to a telemetry system so we can actually type in and say, what's the water level doing now? We also, you can see here, we have this uh, a blue instrument hanging in the water. That's a water quality sonde. So it measures temperature, pH, oxygen, and conductivity at 15 minute intervals. Although Devil's Hole looks small from the surface, it's a massive underwater cave with unique conditions that make this project especially challenging. What's interesting about Devil's Hole, since it's such a large body of water, it's unknown depth, divers have been done at 436 feet, that it follows the lunar tidal cycle. So the water level goes up and down twice in about a 24-hour time period. At one point, the pupfish population at Devil's Hole dropped to just 35, which inspired the creation of a nearby lab where scientists and other staff are replicating the conditions at Devil's Hole for further study. We've created a 110,000 gallon habitat recreation. And it's largely computer driven and that is connected to a mechanical room filled with filtration, um, ultraviolet sterilization, heating and thermal control systems to be able to replicate the really challenging environment of Devil's Hole. There are currently about 100 Devil's Hole pupfish living in the replica offsite tank. The pupfish in and of themselves are kind of cute. We like them. It was, we believe, a man-made problem that caused them to have trouble. We have a certain responsibility, we think, to be able to rectify that as much as we can. They're able to survive in environments that are lethal to most organisms. And a lot of the grand discoveries in science, um, biology especially, have occurred in extreme environments. And if we let them go extinct, uh, we'll never know. Why should we care? And I get that question in my, you know, a lot. So why should we invest the time and the money in conserving and preserving the, the, the species. And I think, you know, I have my NPS hat on now. I'm a scientist, I can put that on. I, I can put my society hat on. And, and I think for me as a scientist, I, I still think we have a lot to learn from this ecosystem. And then, you know, putting on the, the, the society hat, well, that pumping that humans caused, that initial groundwater pumping, that water level never came back up to its pre-pumping level. So we're having an influence on this species. And if we hadn't, if it's a natural evolutionary pathway for the species, that's fine. Species do go extinct and new species evolve. But since we've had a, a human impact on this ecosystem and the fish, I think as a society, we need to decide what is important.